So we're, we're wrapping up on the, the offense trap, and I believe that God has a word for us on today. Offense is scandal on a stick for bait of a trap, generally a snare, a stumbling block, an offense. That's what it is, an offense. So I just want to share three things with you on today. We talk about how when we walk in offense, how it keeps us from walking in our purpose when we walk in offense. It keeps us from walking how God has called us to walk. And when we're walking in the fence with people, we shouldn't go and share our business with everybody else, but we should go to the individual that we're offended with. So we don't tell somebody else that this person upset me and try to build a consensus, but we go to that individual and say, this is what I'm offended about. That's the biblical way. And if that person don't listen, then bring somebody else and then bring it to the church and the whole nine. But the initial response is to talk to the individual that offended you. And we also talked about the person that does the offending and how that person should make sure that you go and ask for forgiveness if you've offended someone. So if you've offended, if you've cheated, if you violated, then you go and ask for forgiveness if you've offended someone. And oftentimes we look at the scripture when Jesus said, if your brother has an offense against you, we looked at, we used to look at it as if you have an offense against your brother, leave your gift at the altar. But the scripture communicates if your brother has an offense against you, leave your gift at the altar. So in other words, if you've done something to somebody or if they perceive that you've done something to them and they have a problem with you, you don't necessarily have a problem with them. But they have a problem with you, leave your gift at the altar, go back and get it right with them. And then come back and worship God. So God said, I don't even want your praise. I don't want your worship. I don't want your gift until you go and make the offense right with the person that has an offense against you. I didn't do anything. So we, we, we talked about that. And so today I want to sum it up with three things. Number one is the cross is offensive. The cross is offensive. When we preach the true, unadulterated word of God, people become offended. The cross, it, it, it's, offensive. it's offensive. We can preach without offending, but we cannot preach the full counsel of God without offending. So I can preach and I can give you something that nobody in here would be offended. Everybody here would be excited, you'll be running, you'll be shouting, you'll be dancing, you'll be running around because, oh my God, I can do But I cannot preach the whole counsel of God without somebody being offended. So in other words, when we talk about the, the, the totality of Scripture, I can't talk about that without somebody being offended because somebody is living in a way that is not in line with Scripture and somebody is not ready to change. And so when we talk about certain things, it's, it becomes a, offensive. We proclaim, we can proclaim a message that makes people feel good, but the, the gospel brings people face to face with their sin and their failures. So in other words, I can talk about adultery, somebody's going to get offended. I can talk about homosexuality, somebody's going to get offended. I can talk about fornication, somebody's going to get offended. We can talk about non-tithers and somebody's going to get offended. We can talk about certain things, certain topics, and people will get offended. If we, if we talk, if we share the whole counsel, the whole word, and, and everything that the word says, Galatians 5 and 11 says, brothers and sisters, this was Paul speaking. He said, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. In other words, he said, if I had taught what, what false teachers teach, if I give you some things that will, will, will scratch your itching ears, then no one would be offended. If I said something that's going to tickle your fancy, if we just talk about you just blessed in the field and blessed in the city, if that's all we talked about, then you won't be offended. But if we talk about the whole counsel of God and everything that the word of God communicates, what thus says the Lord, there's going to be offense. Can't talk about LGBT. Can't talk about certain things. You, you, you talk, and it's a, it's a body of people that would be offended. And it's not that we're talking about them when we talk about the word of God. I'm not talking about you or a people group. I am communicating what scripture says. And when you do that, there's going to be offense. Peter, as he spoke, he spoke boldly. He spoke boldly and he, he dealt with the sins of of, uh, of the people and he said look you all are the ones that crucified Jesus and when he began to make statements like that they they begin to want to stone him and to stone him 
They locked them up. They locked up Peter and they locked up James. See, it, it, as long as they were just, just talking, small talk, nothing was happening. But when they started going deep into the gospel, talking about the cross and you killed the son of God, you killed the maker of the universe, they wanted to stone him. Even so much so that in chapter 7 of the book of Acts, they stoned a man by the name of Stephen, left him dead. They killed him because he preached about the cross. When Paul was preaching in Antioch. It was some that believed and some wanted to stone him. It was to a point to where in one case they stoned Paul, leaving him for dead. Paul got back up. Paul was preaching once and a man fell out of the wonder. He died and Paul prayed for him, got back up and Paul kept on preaching. These people were preaching the gospel of God and it was a Offensive to people. They would lock him up and Peter was crucified and he didn't want to be crucified like Jesus. And history says that he was crucified upside down for preaching the gospel. They were martyred for Christ's sake. Jesus communicated in John chapter 15, verse 18 through 20. He said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. He said, so you, you, you talking about people hating on you. He said, you, you talking about, say, I ain't talking about them hating on you because... They, they, I look good. They, they hating on you because I'm fine. They, no, I'm talking about, they, 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 they going they, they to hate on you. If you love me, if you live for me, if you represent me, if you pull away from, from, from a people group that you were once a part of for me and for my cause, they will hate on you. They will talk about you. So think it not strange when that happened, brethren. He said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. See, ain't nobody saying nothing about you. Everybody singing your praises. Everybody singing your praises. Some, some people got Some people gonna be mad at you because they don't take all that. Yeah. Some people gonna be mad at you because you don't cuss like you used to cuss. Some folks gonna be mad at you because you don't sleep around like you sleep around. Some folks gonna be mad at you because you don't you don't club like you used to club. Some people gonna have an attitude with you because you don't do what you used to do. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not, listen, he said, as it is, you do not belong to the world. People of God, listen, you don't belong to this world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. So stop becoming so in love with this world because we're not going to be here forever. He said, you don't belong to this world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is no greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. So it's going to be some people that's going to follow and some people that's not going to follow. Some people are going to love you and some people are going to hate you for the sake of the gospel and be okay with that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 39, he said, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. He says, so I don't know what they, t what they, t what they tell y'all about this Jesus. They tell y'all about this little nice little Jesus in the manger, and they told y'all something that wasn't true about me. They told y'all, I mean, I was in the manger, and I, it's all good, but, but I ain't come to bring this peace that y'all think I came to bring. I come to bring a sword. See, it's going to be a separation. It's going to be a separation when I come. See, I come at, to bring a stumbling block to those who don't believe and to bring peace to, the, to those that believe. I come to bring something different. You're you, you going to have to get this when, when I come and I lay down the law, it's going to be some decisions that has to be made. And some folks ain't going to want to be my friends and I'm okay with that. It's some people I didn't have to pull away from. When I represented Christ the way I represent Christ, they pulled away from me. I didn't have to make the call. They just stopped coming around because they knew when they came around what I was going to be on, what I was going to be talking about. And they didn't want to be on what I was on. So they'll try you for a minute and see if this is really real. I hear you talking about it now, but let your circumstance change. I want to see if you're still going to be talking about it. Let, 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 let a couple of months or a couple of years go, but I want to see if you're still going to be on what you own right now. And when they saw that I was still on it, then they pulled away. I ain't have to say, man, bro, we can't be cool no more, bro, because you got a wife and two girlfriends. I ain't have to say that. They saw that, man, this is what I'm on. So if you're around me, this is what we're talking about. We ain't talking about what you did at the club. We ain't talking about the shake junk. We ain't talking about you making the rain. We're going to talk about Jesus. That's what we're talking about. He said, do not suppose that I come to bring peace to the earth. I do not come to bring peace, but a sword. <laughs> yeah. This ain't, this ain't Moses. This is Jesus. He said, I ain't come to bring peace, but a sword. Whoever told you, they told, somebody told you wrong. He said, well, I've come to turn a man against his father. What's up with that, Jesus? A daughter against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy would be the members of his own household.
going to like you in your own household. A man enters going to be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He said, whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. He said, you got to lose your life for my sake. And that's when you're going to truly find life. But see, you, you, you too busy doing you. You too busy trying to find yourself. Stop trying to find yourself and start trying to find the one who created you. I'm trying to find you, G. I'm seeking you like never before. I'm just trying, I'm doing me. When I hear that, I'm like, oh, my Lord. I'm just doing me. Like, really? I don't know. Maybe doing you work, but doing me, it, 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 I, I get messed up when I do me. And I think we all get messed up when we do us. I got to do you, God. I got to do what you call me to do. Whoever finds, he said, whoever, not just a couple of people, but whoever finds their life will lose it. You think you're comfortable. I told you before, you got a pseudo peace. Because sometimes your situation can be so toxic. And then somebody will come in your life and you'll think that God brought somebody in your life that God didn't bring in your life. The devil brought in your life. And you don't have to focus on really what you've been going through. Because you feel like this is all I needed. I needed this relationship. I needed this toxic relationship. I just needed somebody in my life to just talk to me. But this somebody married. But this somebody ain't your husband. This somebody is not your wife. And you got a pseudo peace for a moment. Listen, it's a pseudo peace. It's not a peace for real. It's just a relief from this hardship that you're going through. And anything is better than this hardship that you're going through. But I believe that God has sent me here to tell you on the day that the devil is a lie, that that is not from God, that is not peace, that is a pseudo peace. And God wants you to remove yourself from this junk. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because sometimes you just need a break. I need a break from this marriage. I need a break from this man that don't communicate with me. I need a break from this situation. I'm going through things on my job, so let me just get a friend. The devil is a lie. I got to find a friend in Jesus. My God, that's who my friend got to be. In this season in my life, that's you. He my friend. It's the only friend I need. I'm kind of fragile right now. That's the only friend I need. Y'all don't want to have no church. It's the only friend I need. It's the only friend I need. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I, I've been hurt. I, I, I'm damaged right now. I, I don't, I, I don't, oh my, I don't need another relationship because I'm damaged right now. I, I need a friend in Jesus. I'm hurt. I'm vulnerable right now. And I need a friend in Jesus. He not talking to me. She not talking to me. They fired me. I'm broke. I need a friend in Jesus. I don't need to talk to you like you are the answer. I need to reconnect to the answer. <laughs> Some of y'all got what y'all needed right now. Y'all can just, just, you got it. That, that was for you right there. Thank you, Jesus. Because the devil was tricking. You thought, I, I just need a little outlet. You don't need an outlet. You need Jesus. That's your outlet. Need an outlet. An outlet. Ooh, my. That is a trap. That is a trap stick. That's a trap. I just need a, I, I need a change of scenery. You need Jesus. You don't, that's all you need. Yes, Lord. You find your life, you're going to lose it. Whoever lose your life for his sake, you're going to find it. <sighs> Romans 9 and 33. It says, see, I, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble. And a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. One guy said, when we start editing the gospel for fear of offense, we lose everything. Amen. When you start, you, you, you begin to edit the gospel for the fear of offense. Because I don't want to talk to this because if I talk about homosexuality, they're going to leave. If I talk about fornication, they're going to leave. I talk about certain, so I'm going to stay away from certain topics because they're not coming back if I come really up their street. The devil is a lie. See, we, we, we don't talk about the people, but we talk about the sin. Y'all don't have, we, we, we don't talk about them. We talk about, this is what thus says the Lord. I'm telling you what the word of God said. Peter wasn't condemning them. Peter was saying, this is what the word of God said. And if the word of God condemns you, then let it do what it do. So I'm, I'm I, I got to talk about the whole council. I got to talk about what thus is this. You're not going to shut my mouth and say, well, you know, if people talk like this, you know, you preachers, y'all can't talk about. No, 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 no. This is the word of God. And we're going to preach this word of God, period. That's why Peter and them said, well, is it better for us to obey God or man? 
Y'all can try to shut us up all y'all want to and try to send us to jail all y'all want to. It's better for me to obey God than it is to obey man. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Bless the name of God. It said, For Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. He said, it's about, it's, it's about, it's about Jesus. So what, it's, it's a, it, it's, it, it, if the, the stone, what, what you go, you got to do something with the stone. Either the stone going to build you up and you're going to build your life out of the stone, and that's, you're going to call it what it is, the Christ in the church, or you're going to allow the stone to be a stumbling block. First Peter 2 and 21 and verse 23 says, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled in their insults at him, he did not retaliate. <laughs> when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who, would, who judges justly. Your Lord to the God will have you feeling like a stranger in this world. Your Lord to the God is going to have you sometimes feeling like a stranger. It's going to have you feel like, like I don't belong. You're going to go on a group of people and you're going to feel like, my God, wait, I don't... I, I don't belong here. It was one time I went to homecoming. When I went there, I was just like, I, listen, I, you do what you want to do. But I was there one time, and I, it was okay, and I wanted to witness. But I came once, I was like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't belong here. I, I, just me, I didn't find my place there because I don't do what y'all do, and I don't go where y'all go, and I don't talk how y'all talk. And if I come, I'm just coming on assignment, just coming on a mission, but I can't just come and kick it like I used to kick it. I don't belong here because we're not on the same page, and how can the two walk together except they agree? Y'all lost, y'all lost. Thank y'all, four people, because, hey, listen, do what you want to do. It, just for me, just, I, I just, it wasn't. I don't do them kind of parties no more. I, I don't, I, I, and maybe everybody ain't creeping, but I, I know what I was on, and I just, it just wasn't for me. And I remember driving back to Memphis, and I was like, that's, that's it. That's it. I, I don't, that ain't, that, that's not me anymore. I, that, that, it, it's, no, it's no pleasure in that I am different. I felt out of place. I felt awkward. I felt like a fish out of water. And until you feel like a fish out of water, see some environments, you're going to have to feel like a fish out of water. When you go into the lounge and everybody talking and everybody saying, cussing and everybody showing pictures in this right here, something, you got to feel like a fish out of water. You got to feel like I just don't, don't belong. How is it you going to blend in with everybody? Every conversation. That's, let, let me stop. Let me. Because y'all going to get mad at me. How he just going. So, 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 so the cross is, is, is offensive. It's offensive. Some of us going, it's offensive. Jesus is offensive. When I talk about certain things, some folks, they, they were cool with Jesus. He said certain things. You got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. See, Jesus, Jesus, the turn up got real. See, because he said, I'm, I'm going to spoon feed you a little bit. And, 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 and I'm going to feed you in, you know, and with the five loaves and two fish and, and we can talk about some small things and I'm going to turn the water into wine and I'm going to do some miracles and, and y'all going to see this and we're going to heal some people and bring some folks back to dead. It's cool. But the turn up got real. He said, nah, you got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He said, see, y'all was little babies at first and I was feeding y'all, you know, milk. But now you got to get some meat. So you got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. They got offended. Like, no, nah, man, what you, what you think this is, Jesus? He said, in other words, he said, you got to be all in if you're going to be in. You got to be sold out for me. You got, it's got to be me and nobody else. You got to, it, it's got to be a man against the son, a son against his mama, a daughter against the daughter-in-law. It's got to be me and nothing else. In other words, I got to be Lord of your life. I got to take the throne in your life. You got to kick everybody and everything that you got on the throne out and put me on the throne until that happens I want no part of it a lot of people oh, geez, we, they got offended how he gonna say that how he gonna say that you, you mean you really want my life you mean this really is it's really not just about Sunday 
It's not just about Sunday. It's about you want me on Monday. You want me on Tuesday. You really want me to respond to that text message that this woman sent me. You really want me to respond to this text message that this man, I am lonely and you and I need some money and he got some money. You really mean you want me to, to go through this alone? No, no, no. no you, you, you want me to live for you and trust you? You really want me to believe that the cattle on a thousand hills are yours? You really want me to believe that, 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 that no weapon formed against me going to prosper? I can't. I ain't got the strength to believe. I come to church and I praise him and I worship him but when life gets real and when life happens, you want me to stand on the word of God? No, I will not stand on the word of God. I'll just be a casual Christian, a circumstantial Christian and I'll just do a little bit but I refuse to truly give my everything to it and Jesus said, those are the kind you're not worthy. You're, he said, you're not fit for the kingdom. You, you, you're, not, you're not fit for the kingdom. You, you're not he said, see, I, I want more. I want more from you than church. I, 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 want, I, I appreciate your tithes, and I, but I, I want more from you than your tithes. I appreciate you serving, but, but I want more from you than you serving. I want your life. I want your heart. I want your everything. I, I need you in the workhouse represent me. I need you at school represent me. I need you at home represent me. I need you being kingdom in your home. I need you to represent me and what you look at and what you listen to. I want your life. Number two. Don't allow unmet expectations of God to cause offense towards God. Let me say that again. Don't allow unmet expectations of God to cause offense towards God or to cause you to walk in offense towards God. In other words, when God don't answer your prayer or when it seems like he doesn't answer your prayer, when you have a need and, 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 and he, don't, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't fulfill that need that you have or he doesn't come through when you think that he needs to come through or he doesn't come through how you think he needs to come through. In other words, you, you want to be married and you've been wanting to be married and now you're 35 and you're still not married. Or you wanted kids and you've been wanting kids and, and you're 32 and, you, and you, you, you can't have kids. Or you wanted your husband to act right and, and, and you've been praying and your husband's still not acting right. And you wanted your wife to, to submit and, and you've been praying and your wife's still not submitting. And, or you wanted somebody to, to be healed and, and you was praying that they be healed and, and they, they, they weren't healed. You wanted somebody to get saved and, and you've been praying and it's been eight years and they still not saved yet and it's like God what what what, what is up God so so you begin to walk in a fence toward God because what you was expecting didn't happen what you were praying for didn't happen what you were desiring didn't happen God how is it that I've been expecting you to do this how is it that I've been standing on your word God for 10 months God and I've been asking you for this one thing and you didn't do it for me I've been asking you for this. Some of you have been asking for healing. Some of you have been asking for a promotion. Some, and it hadn't happened yet. And because it hadn't happened yet, some of us, we, we walk in a fence toward God. And, and we, don't, we don't open up our mouths and communicate and say, God, I'm offended with you. But it's in your actions. It's in your tone. It's in what you do. It's in your, your discontentment. It's in your heart. It's in your, it's in your lack of worship, your lack of service. Your, your, it, it's, it's, you are walking in a fence toward God. So some of us have a fence with people, but some of us walking in a fence with God because somebody died, because somebody didn't come through, because something didn't happen. You had an expectation and you thought something was going to happen and it didn't happen. And now you're offended and you're offended with God. God, I thought that it would have been me, but it's not me. I thought I would be the one to be married, God, but, but I didn't get married. He got married. I didn't get married. She, I thought I would be the one to get promoted. It didn't happen. I thought my time would come. I've been tithing and fasting and praying, and it hadn't come for me. I thought my children would be the ones that would succeed, but their children are not succeeding. And my kids are just mediocre or less than mediocre. God, what is this that's going on? My kids are getting locked up, and my kids are going to jail, and my kids are going through this. God, what is going on? Now I'm walking on a fence with God because I expected something out of you you and you didn't come through for me all right we're gonna finish this next Sunday it's a man by the name of John the Baptist and John the Baptist was a great man of God Jesus made this statement about John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 he said truly I tell you among those born of a woman there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. 
See, John the Baptist was an awesome man of God, and, and he was a special man. The greatest in the kingdom. See, it was over 430 years, it was divine silence. God wasn't speaking. From Malachi to Matthew, over 430 years, God wasn't speaking. And so, there was no prophet. He wasn't giving a word to any prophets. The silent years. And here John the Baptist come on the scene, born by a woman of by the name of Elizabeth. He was the cousins of Jesus. When Mary told Elizabeth when she came in the room, the Holy Spirit leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, and John the Baptist began leaping inside of her womb at the sound of Mary because Jesus was in Mary's belly. So, so these, are, these are cousins. And this was a prophet of God. So it was interesting about this man because he was ending one era. He was the last prophet that ended one era, but he was also beginning a new era. It was something special about this man. Something special because all the other prophets, the prophets of Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah, who prophesied about the coming of Jesus Christ, they prophesied, but they never had an opportunity to see him. But John was prophesying about him, but he had an opportunity to see him. So this was a special man. John the Baptist, who was cousins with Jesus, he saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who come to take away the sins of the world. When he saw him, and he, he began to baptize Jesus. He said, Look, this is a man of God. He, he came after me, but he was preferred before me. So in other words, he said, he, he, he coming after me because I'm here preparing the way for him. I'm coming saying, make straight the way of the Lord. I'm coming and I'm preaching repentance and saying, the man of God, the son of God, the Messiah, the Christ is coming. Make straight the way of the Lord. I'm talking about repentance. He fasted and praying and, and just was a, he was a peculiar man who came in the spirit of Elijah who would talk about repentance and talk to kings and, and wouldn't be afraid to speak with boldness. He said, he, he come after me. I come before him, but he, he was really preferred before me. In other words, even though humanly he come after me, but spiritually he's before me because before Abraham was, he am. He, he said, before Abraham was, I am. So this man, y'all don't understand who I'm introducing you to. He said, listen, I must decrease while he must increase. I, I'm not even worthy of baptizing you. Jesus, why don't you go ahead and baptize me? Well, just so that the scriptures can be fulfilled, then I'll baptize you. So this is a man that baptized Jesus, also a man of God, closed out one era, brought into a new era. Jesus said, it's the greatest man born of a woman, John the Baptist. So Jesus affirmed this man at this level. But John the Baptist's circumstances changed. And John the Baptist was preached so to where he would preach to a man by the name of King Herod. And when he would preach to King Herod, he was addressing his sin because King Herod was sleeping with his sister-in-law. He was preaching with his sister. He was sleeping with his, with his sister-in-law. And when he was sleeping with his sister-in-law, his sister-in-law, she didn't, she, didn't, she, didn't, she didn't like that. She didn't like that because you're messing up my game. I'm sleeping with the king and you're messing up my game, John the Baptist. But John the Baptist, he didn't care. He said, I'm going to keep on preaching this word. So whoever get offended, you just get offended. Because it's nothing personal. This is about a commission that God has, has called me to do. It's a charge that God has called me to lead, and that's what I'm doing. So he preached, and, and he preached so to, to the young lady's daughter was dancing for him. She was dancing for him, and she was dancing for him, and John the Baptist was so excited about how she danced for him. He said, I'll give you anything you want, up to half the kingdom. Just let, let me know what you want, anything you want. And he said, um, you, you can get whatever, whatever, yeah. Yeah. all of you, you can get that, this, this, him, that, the king. So his side piece Talk to see, talk to her, to her daughter, and she said, uh, you, "You know, just I want John the Baptist's head on the platter." 
So she went and told King Herod, listen, you know, this is what we want. John the Baptist's head on the platter. And so the king had to fulfill what he said he was going to do. So they locked John the Baptist up. So John the Baptist is laying in prison, locked up. Great man of God. Great man of power. Cousins with Jesus. Baptized Jesus. In prison. How is it that this man is in prison? And God could have brought him out of prison. John the Baptist tone began to change. Look at what he began to say in Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 through 6. He said, after Jesus had finished instructing the 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the town of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? Y'all missed it. So, so in other words, he said, listen, I know what we did. I know what we talked about. I know we, what we prophesied. I know what God showed me. I know. But now I'm in this situation. Are you the one or shall we look for another? Are you the Messiah or, or, or shall, is it somebody else that's coming behind you? Wait a minute, John. You was just talking about you. You was just, I mean, what, what just happened? Man, listen, what up, man? This man tell me I cut my head off. Say what you want to, bro. My circumstances is changing. So now I need to, I just need to know, Jesus, are you the one? Or shall I look for another? Shall I go back to the trap? Shall I go back to, I know how to get, it. Should, should, are you the one? Or shall I look for another? Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Then he said in verse 6, blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. And the King James Version said, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And so John the Baptist was in prison. And you know the story. John the Baptist was praying. And he got out of prison. And he came to church. And he was lifting up his hands to God. And he blessed them. And everything was all good. No, that didn't happen. John the Baptist was beheaded. He got his head cut off. Now, how is it that this great man of God, how is it that this man who, who closed out one era and brought in another era, how is it that this man of God who was out in a field, who was out in a field and, and, and ate locusts and honey, a man who was fasting and praying, a man who loved God, a man who said his shoelaces I'm not able to untie, who baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. How is it that this man was in a place and in a prison and was praying for God to do something and God didn't do anything about what he was praying for and he ended up getting beheaded? What just what 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 is that? See, this this see when we when we preach the whole counsel of God, when we talk about the whole counsel of God, we gotta read the good and the bad and not just the good. So we can stand on the good, but we have to understand how God moves and how God operates. Peter, when Peter was in prison, he was in prison and, and they was praying for Peter and James. And Peter came out of prison, but James was killed. James was in prison and he died in prison. Stephen, when he was preaching the gospel, he got stoned to death. Peter, when he was in prison, they was praying. And Peter, an angel came to the prison and got Peter out of jail. And Peter went to, to the house church where the people were that was praying for him. And they was amazed that Peter was out of jail. Peter ended up getting crucified upside down later on. Paul ended up dying for the sake of the gospel. You're talking about some people who truly love God, who said, my circumstances is not going to determine my commitment to God. I don't want to have no church today. My, 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 cir my circumstances may change, but my commitment level remains the same. Thank you, three people. See, because some of us, that's what we give up because the circumstances change. And we can be on a mountain and you'll praise them on a mountain. But when you go in the valley, you throw in the towel in the valley. Because somebody has given you a false doctrine and it's been scratching your itching ears to say that you bless everywhere you go and blessed over here and blessed over there. And hadn't told you the whole council that the sun shine on the just as well as the unjust. And it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So you got to accept the good with the bad as well. And sometimes things are happening that's great and sometimes things are happening that's not so great. But you got to understand. 
understand that this is not our home, that heaven is our home. So we don't live for right here and for right now. We live for a kingdom. Look at somebody and say, this is not my home. It's not my home. It's not my home. And you got to understand that and you got to believe that, that everything is not going to be peaches and cream. And everything is not going to be all good in your life. In other words, you got to say, if I get fired, what am I going to do? If, I get, if, if my husband leave, what am I going to do? If my auntie leave, what am I going to do? If my wife cheat, what am I going to do? If I get broke, what am I going to do? If my circumstances may change, but my commitment level has to remain the same. Are you the one or shall we look for another? See, some of us are praying that prayer right now. God, are you, are you the one? I mean, come on. Because, see, I, I've been praying for 15 years about this and, and nothing has happened. I've been praying for you to come through for me, God, and nothing has happened. I've been praying for you to fix my husband and nothing has happened. I've been praying for this healing and nothing has happened. I've been praying that I get married and nothing has happened. I've been praying for healing. I've been praying that they don't die and, and, and it still happened, God. What is really going on, God? Are you the one or shall I look for another? The power was in your hand and you still allow what happened to happen. Yeah, see, I, 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 God, what, what, what? So I'm offended. I'm offended with you. See, I'm, I'm, I'm offended because I asked you something and you didn't do it, and it was in your power to do it. And I know it was in your power to do it because all power is in your hand. Are we gonna be honest about it? Or are we gonna say, see, we, when things good happen, all power in your hand. When things bad happen, it was the devil. That's what, what, what's really going on. I know some of us ain't going to be honest with ourselves and be honest with God. And we just going to you know, just, just, just go through the motion. And, but God, wanna, I wanna, I, I, you my son and you my daughter. And it's okay for you to rent a little bit. It's okay for you to be a little discouraged a little bit. It's okay for you to not understand what's going on. It's okay for you to be confused. And I got you. It's okay. You got questions. How did that baby pass? You got questions. How did my uncle leave here? You got questions. How did this happen in my life? It happened too soon. God, what is going on, God? Are you the one or shall I look for another God? I thought I was supposed to be at this level but I'm still right here I thought I was supposed to be walking in my calling but I'm still right here are you the one God yeah. shall I shall I look for another because I don't I don't like where I am I don't like my circumstances I don't like my situation I've been praying for you how many times we're gonna have to go on a fast how many times I'm going to have to fast for my husband? How many times I'm going to have to fast for a husband? How many times I'm going to have to fast for, for my flesh? How many times I'm going to have to fast to keep to prevent from watching this stuff that I've been, that's been plaguing me? When is these thoughts going to get out of my head? God, deliver me from this sickness, God, that I'm going through, God. How many times? We called a fast two years ago, and I was fasting for that. We called a fast last year, and I was fasting for that. We called a fast this year, and I was fasting about that. And so right now, I don't, God, I love you but I don't trust you. God, and some of you won't let that come out of your mouth, but it's in your actions. It's in your pulling away. It's in your not talking to them. It's in your not getting in devotion. It's in your not read. It's in your just, your inconsistency. It's, you, you won't say it, but it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really trust you because I, 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 I was out here on the ledge for you at one point and it did not happen and I had an expectation of you and you didn't do it. So I'm afraid that if I trust you again, you're going to hurt me again. I need a God that I can trust. So I'm, I'm a, hence, I'm going to do me. See, I ain't, see it, it's the, I ain't going to, I would never say this. I, I won't say it. It's just, it's in me doing me. I'm, I'm quiet about it. I'm just, I'm just, I got, I got somebody on the side. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's what I do. I'm sleeping with, I ain't, I'm not going to trust you for no husband. He ain't came, because I, for one year I was abstinent, and you ain't sent him in, and this guy I thought was going to be my husband, he turned out somebody else, and, and so you know what, it's, it's what it is, and so I'm just going to. Take my chances on getting how I live. And hopefully he save or something. I, I don't know, but I, I go through the motion, God, but I, 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 really, I, really, don't, I really don't trust you, God. Because my, my, cause what happened to my daddy, you, that, that, that wasn't, I hadn't, I hadn't got over that. 
what, what, what happened to my uncle, I, I hadn't got, what happened to my cousin, what happened to my auntie, I hadn't, I hadn't got over there, God. And, 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 I, and, and, and I'm, I'm with you, but I'm really not with you, God. See, I can't talk to you because I don't really know you like that. I don't really know you like that to really have this type of comfort, but I am offended. I am oppressed. I am depressed. I am mad. I am upset. And I try to just go through the floor and just well, praise the Lord and bless the Lord. But I got a problem with trusting in a God that would allow this to happen in my life. John, John said, are, are you the one? Or shall we look for another? But you, you, but you have to look at the whole council. And you have to look at scripture. But see, when this is your home, you have a different perspective. You, you, you don't understand that, that the sun shine on the just as well as the unjust. That just because you get a divorce don't mean that God don't love you. That just because God don't save them don't mean that God don't care about you. That just means that because God didn't resurrect your situation. That God forgot about you. Even though it happened, God, I still love you. I still trust you because I know the whole counsel of scripture. I know all of it. Not just a fear over here and a fear over there. It's all of it. Some of them you raised and some of them you allowed to die so God I just bless your holy name for allowing me to be a part of your work and not that your issue is not real not that your situation is not real not that your pain is not real not that your hurt is not real not that your disappointment is not real but it's what you do with it it's where you take your disappointment some of you take it to the bottle some of you take it to to to, to weed. Some of you take it to a relationship. You take it to a man. And God, I want you to bring all of your pain. I want you to bring all of your hurt. I want you to bring all of your disappointment. I want you to bring all of your uncertainty to me. Bring all of it to me. Because we are clap. Because we are rejoice. We are lift up our hands. But still, we come to church, we come to live, we come to breathe, we come to man cave, we come to life group, still with an offense in our heart because God didn't do that thing that you knew that he was going to do, that you thought that he was going to do. It didn't happen how and when you thought it was going to happen, how you thought it should have happened. And you're offended. And you're walking in offense. He said in verse 6, and blessed is he whosoever should not be offended in me. See, see, it, it was a month ago today my brother passed. And we got a call that morning. I got a call that morning from his wife, and she said he was unresponsive. And she was screaming and said he was unresponsive. So my initial reaction is I'm praying and I'm hoping, and I'm, God, don't let him die. God, don't go. And I'm riding over to his house. God, please don't let my brother die. God, please don't let my brother be dead. God, please, God, please, Lord Jesus, please. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. God, please, God. My brother, my brother passed. And, and, and when my brother passed, when he passed, I said, God, please bring him back. God, bring them back, God. Raise them back up, God. Bring them back, God. Bring them back. Because, God, I, I've seen you bring folks back, God. So I know that you can bring folks back, God. God, bring, bring them back, God. God, you, you brought Lazarus back, and he was dead for four days. And, God, it hadn't even been a day. It hadn't even been, it hadn't been a half a day, God. Bring them back, God. I want to see you do it. I'm bold enough to ask you that. I trust you enough to ask you that. I know that you can do it, so bring them back. He ended up dying. My God. God, what, 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 am I, what, what do I do with this? What, what do I do? What do I do with this? Because a year prior to, a year and two weeks prior to, I had a brother to die. So now we're dealing with this again? God, what, God what's, what is going on? God, what, what, do we, what do we do? What do we, where do we go from here? What do, what do God, what, I need you. 
and the enemy is speaking and the enemy is talking and the enemy is oh yeah because that's what he does that's what he does when jesus is on the cross oh if you're the son of god get yourself off the cross oh yeah, yeah. the enemy talks because the enemy take every opportunity that he can take to try to get you discouraged and try to get you to turn your back on god and try to get you to quit he said your circumstances change and god had power to do something and god didn't do it so now what are you gonna do I don't know, God, I, God, God, I, what, what am I going to do, Peter? Peter and see, and, 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 and it was when, when Peter made a statement, he was like, he came to resolve. But I, I want to share this with you. I want to share this with you. Because this is what some of us are praying. We're saying this in, in Psalms 13, verse 1 through 6, it said, how long, Lord? See, I, I know, I, I know, you, that may not be your prayer, but some of you going through some things in your life and you're and you saying, how long, Lord? How long am I going to be broke? How long am I going to be lonely? How long am I going to be single? How long am I going to be unemployed? How long am I going to be in this marriage right here? How long am I going to be in this, in this relationship? How long am I going to feel like this? How long am I going to feel this depression? How long am I going to be sick? How long are my kids going to take me through what they're taking me through? How long am I going to have to deal with this offense that I'm dealing with? How long, God? How long? How long? When is it going to pop for me? When is it going to happen for me? When is it going to happen for my family? How long will, will you forget? <laughs> the psalmist said, how long will you forget me forever? Will you forget me forever? He's saying, God, you, are you, have you forgotten about me? Will you forget me forever? Because obviously in this moment, you had to forget about me. Because I needed something, you didn't do it. So how, how long? How long will you hide your face from me? Because you got to be hiding your face from me because I asked you and you didn't do it. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And day after day, have sorrow in my heart. I got sorrow in my heart. I'm wrestling with my thoughts. The devil is beating me down because I don't know what to do. How long must I deal with this stuff? They telling me to stay in this marriage, but everything in me is saying I need to get out of this. How long must I wrestle with these thoughts? They see the surface and they think that he's a good man. But this joker here is a beast. And they smiling and Pastor Mary be smiling and high five. But if he knew what I was catching in his phone, this joker is sick. Where your discernment at, Pastor Myron? Ain't you, can't you prophesy something? Say something to him. How long? He fooling everybody. How long will my enemy triumph over me? They ain't living half, they living half crazy, and I'm living saved, and they triumphing over me. She got the job. Now I got to report to her. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. If you don't do it, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of here. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. He said, I'm, I'm going through a whole lot. I'm, I'm going through, I can't, I can't believe that I'm going through what I'm going through. How long am I going to go through this? I've been preaching, I've been teaching, I've been abstaining, I've been trying to do it your way. And it's not, it's not happening how I think it should happen. My kids, my situation, it's just not, how long? Why my kids got to go? Why my kids got to do this? What I do wrong? I'm trying to do it right and I got to experience this. How long, God? I know I ain't been perfect, but my God, how long? And so when, when he got through praying out and crying out to God, and he got through struggling, and the enemy got through speaking to his brain, and the enemy got through telling him, you might as well just curse God and die. And the enemy got through just, just speaking because the enemy speaks and the enemy say, church don't work and tithing don't work and giving don't work and God don't work and this don't work. And, and there you see her and she ain't got married and you see this and this and it don't work. And after all of that, he said, but I trust in your unfailing love. After all of that, he said, but, 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 but I trust 
after all of that but I trust in your unfailing love my heart rejoices in your salvation he said matter of fact I won't just talk it I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me in other words he's been better than good to me in other words he's been better to me than I've been to myself in other words God I'm gonna lift up my voice and say hallelujah God in other words if I had 10,000 tongues I couldn't praise you enough in other words saying thank you ain't enough I'm gonna give you the highest form of praise and say hallelujah to you God my God the devil want me to focus on what you didn't do but I'm gonna start focusing on what you did do God God you brought me out of that you brought me out of this you brought me out of that so God I bless your holy name God things are bad God but they could be worse God so God I bless your holy name I'm gonna get an enemy of fit and I'm gonna have a praise party God I bless your holy name I'm hurt but I praise you I'm disappointed but I praise you I'm a little broken but I praise you God if I leave you I feel like Peter then where am I gonna go God I love you God I trust you God you've been better than good to me God I give you glory I give you praise the psalmist came to his senses and began to rejoice in God he said I refuse to walk in offense with God I refuse to walk in, in with my head hung down I bless your holy name God come on and give God some praise hallelujah I'm going to make this really quick and I want you to love and forgiveness is the cure for offense love and forgiveness that's the cure for offense look at what Apostle Paul said Devin 1 Corinthians 13 4 and 5 he said love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. That's what love does. It's not easily angered. It's not about self. Some of you get mad so quick and you easily angered and it's about self. It keeps no record of wrong. I'm going to do this because he did this. Some of you, not you, some people are committing adultery because their spouse committed adultery. So you are risking your life. Because you're walking in a fence with somebody. He, he did it. I can do it too. God, fix him. Some of you won't let God all in you because you offended by you offended with God. How you let my friend die? How you let my mama? How you let my cousin? How you let? So, oh, you thought they was gonna live forever. So if it would have happened five years from now, you would have been better. What or five years prior? Now, would when would it have? What, what, what's the opportune time for me to take them? Tell me, what is the opportune time? When he passed, my mama said, the Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken. Because if you're going to submit to him, you got to submit to him. Because when we say come and make him Lord of your life, it ain't just make him Lord as long as your marriage good. Make him Lord as long as nobody die. Make him Lord as long as you got money. Make him Lord as long as your kids acting right. Make him Lord as long as you on the mountaintop. He want to be Lord of the valley. Lord of your broken heart. He said, I, I can fix that. You're running the wrong way. I want you running to me. You're in this place called life. And there are going to be highs and lows in life. There are going to be mountains and storms and, and, and pain and rain in life. Don't go through this without me. I couldn't imagine going through what we're going through without God. 
but that was God. Because everybody's brother going to die. If it's if, my hand, everybody's going. Without, without God. But he'll keep you in perfect peace. <sighs> if you keep your mind on him. And sometimes you got to fight to keep your mind on him. You got to fight. That. I got to fight to keep my Because my mind wanders sometimes. And I got to fight to keep my mind on Because I know where my strength, I know where my peace, I know where my help come from. You got to know where your help come from. My help come from the Lord. And it's been coming from the Lord. All them breakthroughs. So you run into, and this what you, this what you gonna do. And this stuff not easy. But you gotta be anchored. That's that's all I'm trying to communicate. Not to minimize anything that anybody's going through. I'm just saying, he wants you anchored. He wants you anchored in him. To where when the storms come and the wind blow and it beat up against the house it does not fall down because your house is built out of the rock Th that's what I'm saying he said he who hears these words of mine and does it it's like those whose house built on a rock but if you hear the word and you don't do it then your house is built on the same so when the storms come you're going to fold and fall every time First Peter 4 and 8 says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. And then the last verse is what we started with, Ephesians 4 and 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God forgave you. How long will you walk with this offense? You think nobody see it? But they see it. I can't talk to you. I can't say anything to you. When you tell me about what go on at work, I want to say that they right. When you tell me about what happened with you and your friend, that that wasn't them, baby. That's you. But I don't say anything because I can't talk to you. Because you're walking around in a fence. Because of what your mama did to you or what your mama didn't do. Because of what your daddy did to you. Because of what happened when you was 10 years old. You're walking around with this offense. And you won't let nobody in. Or you, you're walking around with an offense of when somebody passed 15 years ago. And it's hard for you to trust God. Because it's something that you won't say when everybody talking about. But you can't fathom how is it that a loving God would allow a one-year-old to just have it. And you... So you just come to church because that's the thing to do. So you are calm, but you ain't committed. It's just the thing to do. It's what you've been doing. Because you're walking on the fence. Because he ain't had to go down like that. He ain't had to have him like that. Why, why me? You're walking on the fence with God. You and you got to let the offense go. I got to go and get this stuff right. I got to get it right with. I got to I got to let this I got to let this go because it's blocking me. From what God wants from me. It's blocking me from reaching my destiny. It's keeping me behind a wall, behind a fence. And I can't have a true relationship with God. When I'm offended by God. And not recognizing that I offended God. When I lied. When I stole. When I cheated. When I was malicious. When I was backbiting. When I was cussing them out. I offended God. But he took my offense. And he bore my offense in his body. And he nailed it on the cross. And he died for my offense. He died for my selfishness. But because he didn't do this thing. If 
And I believe that God want to set you free today. Because I believe that he said something through me that you've been wanting to say or that you've been feeling. And it's not just, you, you, didn't, you didn't articulate it, but it's, I've been walking, I've been blaming God, I've been, God. And on today, you got to let go of the offense. Have your way in me, God. Have your way in my soul, God. 